This week on Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesdays, we're going airborne with best practices in using the Trimble Forensic solutions with UAV photogrammetry. Now, if you want to get the most out of your UAV and software purchase, stick around. Last week, we worked with Thomas Erdman with Siler Instrument, and this week, we would like to take a moment to introduce Mr. Calvin Reichard, who is with one of our partners, Duncan Parnell. Calvin has done a lot of work with UAVs and the Trimble R4 GNSS solution, and we would like to take a moment to introduce him to all of you, especially if you're in the Southeast United States. Hey y'all, this is Calvin Reichard, a law enforcement advisor for Duncan Parnell, who is a distributor for Trimble products for most of the southeastern states. We actually cover Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Prior to my retirement with the South Carolina Highway Patrol's Reconstruction Unit, we actually had a chance to use Trimble products and solutions, along with other outside sources of attaining data at our collision and crime scenes. And what we found with using these products, especially the GNSS system with Trimble, along with UAV data, that our time savings at scenes could be substantially reduced from using these two products together. And it actually prompted me to do a test to see actually what time savings we could use or save from using UAV data along with the GNSS instead of the two-man traditional total station setup. And what we found that at a minimum, it would have been 68% more effective in time to use a GNSS along with UAV data instead of the traditional total station um, setup that we had used for, for many, many years. So if this is something that you think may help you or your agency, and you live in one of those five states that I just referenced, please don't hesitate to reach out and give me a call. So if it's something that we can help you with, I would be more than honored to, uh, to talk to you about that. If you're in the Southeast and would like to get in touch with Calvin, we'll leave his phone number and email address in the description below. The use of UAVs for forensic use has brought a lot of additional capabilities when it comes to mapping our crash and crime scenes. However, it isn't always as simple as pushing a button to fly, pushing a button to generate a point cloud, and we're done. As with most things, if best practices are not followed, a less than optimal end product may result. Now, in this episode, we want to give you the information you need to have confidence that your next UAV photogrammetry scene is forensically sound, not just a pretty picture. One of the most critical factors in making an accurate photogrammetry derived map is the placement of GCPs, or ground control points. These points are where accuracy starts, and errors introduced here will rear their ugly head later. Typically, GCPs are precisely measured using an optical total station or GNSS receiver with corrections, such as RTK and TRIP or RTX. Once the UAV has flown over the scene and taken its pictures of the GCPs and the rest of the scene, it lands, and then you can send the pictures over to a specialized software to stitch all of them together. As the software stitches these photos together, the final result can be thought of as a flexible, stretchable rubber sheet. The photogrammetry software does its best guess how that sheet should be stretched, but without GCPs, that sheet can be twisted and stretched a fair amount and may or may not be accurate to what is actually on scene. GCPs work like pins to pin that rubber sheet and make sure the end result is accurate. Now, thinking back to the pinning analogy, placing all of your pins on a single end of the sheet may result in that end being accurate, but the other end is free to warp and stretch. Best practice is to sprinkle your GCPs evenly throughout your scene, extending them outside of the scene evidence, but still within the lines of flight. Another good idea is to place the GCPs in a staggered or scattered fashion, not in line with one another. Also, if your scene has a significant change in topography, it's good to place your GCPs along those changing elevations. Next, let's take a look at the targets themselves. The targets need to be large enough to be seen from the air. Generally, 12 inches would be fairly small, but if you're flying at low altitude, you may be able to use something even smaller. Now, if you're going to fly higher, a larger target, such as a 24 or 36 inch square, may be necessary. Next, you're going to want to be able to identify the center of the target easily. Arrows, checkerboard patterns, or anything to help find the center of the target is going to be helpful, whereas a solid color may not. A useful feature of the Trimble Forensics Capture Field software is the ability to take a photo and attach it to a point. If you take a moment to snap a picture of your GCP, it may save a bit of headache in the office later when you have to find out what point was what. 
Was it evidence or a GCP? The photo attachment can help answer that question. Now, since your GCPs need to be spread throughout a scene and need to encompass it on all sides, this may present a challenge with an optical total station. If your scene is large or has a lot of vision obstructions, such as trees or buildings, using an optical total station to map your control points without a move may prove to be challenging. And of course, with every total station move, there's a cumulative error that will be introduced in your GCP geometry. The Trimble R4 SLEG and SS receiver may be the perfect choice in situations like these. Now, if you'd like to know how GNSS works, take a look back at our Tech Tip playlist to our last two episodes and see how it works. Now, whether you choose an optical total station or a GNSS instrument, the Trimble Forensics Capture and Reveal software makes integrating your UAV photogrammetry scene data a simple step-by-step -step procedure. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, or feel free to reach out to one of our partners, such as Calvin at Duncan Parnell, and they'll be happy to answer your questions. If this video helped, be sure to give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again next week.